Welcome to our brand new show. Hello. Hi. This is our, uh, we got fucked in the ass by blip party. <laughs> it certainly is. Right up there, right up the bottom. I want to say this is like those girls of the podcast 2.0 now, but we're still the same. We're still dumb. and we're exactly the same. <laughs> thing in harmony. Basically, uh, blip. <laughs> Basically, what happened was, see what happened was, uh, blip gave us like a year not to suck, and uh, yes, we, we defied them and continued to suck because we stick to our level of quality. Yeah, but oh. I think the biggest slap in the face for me was that everybody got that message on the same day, which is what I figured out. I thought they had just given us a year and, you know, whatever. But that message came, funnily enough, on the exact day that we uploaded the first podcast one year ago. Oh, that stinks. So it was happy <laughs> birthday to us. Uh... <laughs> happy birthday to those girls with the podcast. Happy birthday to us. <laughs> <laughs> They're on YouTube now. <laughs> YouTube seems to be working a little better for me, though, even though I have no idea how to use the Google Plus integration because I have not made a YouTube account in a while. Um, I made my YouTube account years ago, so back before they had the deal with Google. So, yeah. But every time what? I even go on the Google Plus site, it like tr- almost crashes my entire browser because there's too much t- stuff on the screen going on. So. I have to have I have to have a Google Plus account for my YouTube account. Yeah. I don't even like use the email account or check it or anything like that. It just is a non-entity as far as I'm concerned. Mm. And fuck you, Blit. By the way, we're loving it on here. Fuck off. No. <laughs> we don't we don't have the kind of views that Linkara gets, so they kind of just kicked us off, along yeah. with a bunch of other people, surprisingly. Yeah, so a lot of people we really like, like the porn critic. We love the porn critic over here. The point. He's a friend of the show, even though he's never listened to it or heard of us. Um, <laughs> he's a but he's a friend of Welshie who listens to the show, so maybe that's like yeah. Well, Welshie, Welshie's a friend of the show. I really like that. My new thing now is going to be saying that people are a friend of the show. <laughs> friend of the oh, show, you know you. one of us. Friend of the show. <laughs> Talking of people that are not a friend of the show. Um, Jimmy Kimmel, um, recently did another celebrity meme tweets, um, a musical edition. Yeah, that was uh, really funny. It was fucking hilarious. I suggest you watch them all, but... Lil I- Wayne looks like a crab apple. That is gonna be the title <laughs> of my memoir. <laughs> I totally forgot about that one. I love how Lil Wayne's like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, they all seem pretty chill about it, to their credit. Yeah. Um, but I really wanted my James Franco tweet to get on there. <laughs> well, it was a musician's tweet, so maybe next time. Oh, maybe There's next There's actors on there, too. Well, mine was, you could paint a grey wall grey, and it still wouldn't be as fucking boring as James Franco. <laughs> um, my, stuff up. my other favorite one on there was uh, 2 Chains. He said, 2 Chains looks like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, he really does. <laughs> he really does. I mean, only because he's black and has dreadlocks. No, but, but he, le- like, in the face, he legitimately has the build of Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, whoops, I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> Fran, are what? you saying all black people look the same? Yeah, I, shut, no. <laughs> no, God, I'm really not. No, no. <laughs> So we spent uh, 30 minutes uh, before we recorded explaining the American government to Fran. <laughs> yeah. Because well, she's baffled that the government is still, like, not working. And I mean, I'm sure it wasn't working before, but now they're yeah. actually... <laughs> now they're uh, actually not going to work. Yeah, it's uh, two very different things. Um, but no, they showed me um, a video that, uh, you know, any... English person that is listening to this will have seen this spoofed um, on things like The Simpsons and Family Guy and had, you know, a kind of vague recollection of it. It's a video where, like, a rolled-up 
bit of paper, one that you might find in like a bottle, in like message in a bottle or whatever, is like on the steps to what looks like a government building, like the White House, but not, and it's singing a song. And I finally saw the real original version of this video, and it taught me everything I need to know. The schoolhouse about, Rock, I'm, I'm just, he was sitting on the Capitol building, by the way. That's the, the Cap Capitol building. Okay, duly noted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, it taught me everything I need to know about how a bill is passed, how a law becomes a law. And you learned and, everything you need to know about the US government. <laughs> the thing that I learned the most, or the thing that I had kind of confirmed, were, was uh, America and England are so different. There is no way that something that sincere, something that unironic, that reverent, would come to pass in the UK. It was you told me, you're like, it just believes so much. <laughs> it believes so much in America and in the goodness and fundamental kind of spirit of democracy. And uh, God bless it for that. God bless you, Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> I'm going to send you more of them because they, 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 they usually did them on some math and then I remember they did a lot of them on grammar and then they did a lot on US history and okay. US government and stuff. And they uh, they were all collectively called the Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. Right, okay. They made a bunch of them. Fascinating. It was like god, they must have made those in like the 80s or something. I think it was like the 70s. 70s. Sometime before the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> It it's was very, before my time. But we watched them all the time yeah. in school when I was in grade school. It's incredible. It's re it really is. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to find an equivalent for because the, the educational things for English children are designed to frighten them. Yes, um, have that magic roundabout shit that frightened the fuck out of me. That wasn't educational. That was legitimately terrifying. <laughs> That was that was trippy for everyone involved. Okay, English. Good. No, the magic roundabout is nuts. You guys don't have like Sesame Street or whatever. Um, we did have Sesame Street. We had Sesame Street until about two thousand and one. Then you guys are like, this is way too happy. <laughs> like honestly, like it, it maybe not way too happy, but you're not far off. It was like this is too American. We need a British equivalent. So we had this show, The Hoobs, which it, it was Henson Animation, but it was British voices and British writers and not Henson Animation, sorry, Henson Puppets. And it was it was good. You know, it was entertaining and fun and funny and all the things that you would come to expect from the Henson company. But it wasn't Sesame Street. You know, I yeah. don't think we should be ashamed of the fact that that is a really good show. Yeah, you know, I know they're Australian, but you guys don't have like the Wiggles or anything like Oh, fuck the Wiggles. The Wiggles are awesome! You shut your whore mouth! Whoa. <laughs> I believe we hit a nerve. <laughs> I watch no. the Wiggles all the time. You stop it. Oh, I... I can't even... Okay, alright. I'm sure we can both agree that Yo Gabba Gabba is a piece of crap. Yo Gabba Gabba's pretty cool. Oh, what? I Great. saw it! I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm like, this is weird, but I think I like it. <laughs> I'll tell you, no, the the most insane children's show is Lazy Town. Lazy Town's kind of weird. I have to Lazy, say that. Lazy Town is one... I don't even know what the fuck I watched when I first... That that came on, that, that premiered when I was still a little kid. I'm like, that what even am I watching? <laughs> that's, the guy with the, that's the one with the, the girl with the pink hair and the two guys running around in spandex. Yeah, the you are yes. a pirate. That's, that comes from that. Those, those guys are pretty hot, though, so... <laughs> well, I think it's the same guy. The guy that plays... Is it really? Is that, is that show Canadian? I believe so. That, what? that does not surprise me. All the really trippy stuff that isn't from, like, a country in with an accent comes from Canada. Yeah. What I, what I love about Lazy Town is that the guy that plays Sportacus and the villain Robbie Rotten, like, he created the show. He really believes in the message. He really believes that when... He he uses the term sports candy for fruit in, in a completely unironic way. Wow. And I love Apparently him for that. Apparently it is an, an Icelandic-American 
children's television program. Uh, so oh, the crew is from Iceland, the United Kingdom, and the United States. I swear to God, I thought it was Canadian. <laughs> oh, apparently we're all as fucked up as each other. Oh, <laughs> All the moms that I know, I know a bunch of moms with, like, little, little kids, and they all collectively hate uh, this show called Caillou, <laughs> and it's about, oh, God. it's this animated show about this little fucking bald kid who looks like he has leukemia or something, <laughs> and all he does is, like, cry and whine, and, like, he learns nothing, and his parents, his parents just put up with it. And, <laughs> and I've seen the show. I watched the show when I was a kid. But all the moms I know, they're like, this show is awful for my child. <laughs> I really, really liked Angela Anaconda. That was a weird show. That came from I, Canada, too, I think. I liked Angela Anaconda a lot. My favorite... Um, that show, like, always scared me. Like, I think my favorite was Hey Arnold. Well, I mean, I that's don't kind like of a kids' show. I mean, that's a cartoon. I wouldn't call it like a little kid children's show, like a little kid. But certainly from that, I think that was a really good era for children's TV yeah. in the '90s with things like the Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and uh, yeah, I, I really I, kids remember the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> 90s kids really love to go on about the '90s. We can't get enough. Um, I I watched. I watched Barney a lot when I was a kid. I really... I loved Barney. I loved it, Barney, too. I always get angry whenever people talk about Barney as a pedophile, and I'm like, he's a dinosaur. <laughs> he's a dinosaur costume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, among other I things... I loved like... Barney. I watched Barney, like, religiously when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I loved Barney. And I mean, it's funny. Like, I look at it now, and I can recognize why people hate it. Yeah, but... I t- it's really annoying. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it's really annoying and really insipid. And Just like I like the Teletubbies, too, when I was a kid. and I, But I totally get why people think it's annoying. Yeah, no, Teletubbies, again, I completely get. I mean, my favorite thing in the Teletubbies is the baby in the sun. Yeah, I think Teletubbies is Australian. No, that's English. Is it English? Yeah, that's English. It's either English or Australian, I think. Yeah, it's but definitely it's English. It's English? Yep. That makes sense. Now that's <laughs> It does, it does make sense. I also, well, I also watched way too much Blue's Clues when I was a kid. What's Blue's Clues? Blue's Clu- oh my gosh, Blue's Clues was the greatest show ever made. Blue's Clues <laughs> was, uh, it, it was a fully animated show, except mm. for Steve, who was a live person. He was like a real guy. And, oh. uh, he would interact with, like, the animated background. And I have no idea how he did this for so long. But his dog, Blue, would just be like, you know, he's like, what do you want to do today, Blue? And then Blue would just be like, I'll leave clues. The the whole point of the show was the dog, Blue, would leave clues around to find out what you he want, she wanted to do today for that kind of thing. So she would put her paw print on different things, and it's like, oh, it's a clue. And you have three different clues at the end of the show, and you're like, okay, well, what does Blue want to do today? <laughs> So what about what about kids shows that you see now as an adult that you just come across? Because there's I mean, there's I still an amazing... find Sesame Street to be very entertaining. Oh, I do too. I, I find it's... Sesame Street to be more entertaining to me as an adult than I did as a kid. I just find. Did it... you see the video of uh, Tom Hiddleston with Cookie Monster? Cookie Monster, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. No, there's an amazing British show called Big Cook, Little Cook. Which is, it's a big guy, and then a little tiny guy. Well, they've it's like a normal size guy, but they've, like, used, uh, like, special effects to make him look really tiny, like he could stand up on your the palm of your hand tiny. And it's called Big Cook, Little Cook, and Little Cook flies around on a wooden spoon. And he oh. is just, the Big Cook is called, like, Steve or something like that. The Little Cook is just called Small. <laughs> It's really inventive that show. <laughs> it, I've got a, I've got to play you the theme song. This will be very entertaining. I, I know the the most I really know about kids shows today come from uh, my neighbor who has a four year old son, and she has to watch all these shows with him because he loves you know Disney Junior the channel and 
uh, you know, he, she has to watch all of this stuff with him, but then she ends up really getting into these shows. Like, she loves to watch this show with him called Sophia the First, which is about, uh, it actually caused a little bit of talk when it came out because she is, uh, uh, the first Hispanic princess. Oh, wow. So she's, like, this little Hispanic girl who's a princess, and, uh, there's another show called The Fresh Beat Band, which is kind of like The Wiggles, except they're American. Um, I think there's another show called Doc McStuffins, where it's about some little girl Don't... who's, like, a doctor to stuffed animals. And my, my favorite thing in the UK is something called Rasta Mouse. What's that about? It's about a Rastafarian mouse. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not. Is I that swear a real to God. thing? That is a real thing. I fucking love Rasta Mouse. Uh, like, Rasta, really? Well, I was going to say, actually, one thing that I really like about British shows for, like, little, little kids are how many clearly gay characters there are. Like, fucking Tinky Winky in the Teletubbies. First of all, he was called Tinky Winky. <laughs> carried around a big red handbag. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, as an adult, if I'm, like, laying in bed at three in the morning, and there's this channel here called Sprout, which runs, like, preschool age shows 24 hours a day. Oh, that 24-7. Awesome. And usually at three or four in the morning, they're showing Sesame Street. So I watch Sesame Street, and I find Sesame Street, like, ten times more entertaining than I did when I was a kid. It's, I mean, the thing is, like, I, I find it equally entertaining. I just find it entertaining, and I think the thing is, is, as a little kid, I found it entertaining, and I couldn't really explain why I was drawn to it. Yep. Now, as an yep. adult, I can see why. It's because it really is as profound as... My, it, my mom people's... says when she would watch it with us when we were kids, her favorite bit, and she would laugh her ass off, was um, yeah. when the... They, they have these dogs, um, and the breed is a Weimaraner, so my mom would be like, remember, like, the Weimaraner dogs? And they would, like, have the dog, and it would have, like, human hands. Like, it would be a human doing the hands, but it would be a dog's head. And, like, they would do all these things, and the, the dog would, you know, and they're dressed up in suits and stuff. It would just be, like, the dog's head. But everything yeah. else about it would be human. Like, they kind of just put the dog up there and just have the human hands. But she said it was the funniest thing in the world to her because they would be like baking a cake or uh, selling some fruits, you know? <laughs> I get that. I'm so on her level. You know, I think my other favorite thing was uh, like the Yip Yip aliens, which I still love to this day. I don't know what that is. It's those aliens that like came to Earth. They're like, Oh, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and they'll be like, uh, number, and then they'll be like, um, like, two, two, yep, 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 <laughs> it's so weird, it's so fucked up, but it's, I, I'll have to send you clips, because that is, like, the funniest shit. I'll <laughs> send you, actually, another really good thing, El Nombre, El Nombre! Is that a Spanish show for... English no, it's a show. They would never make something called El Nombre in Spain. Um, no, I mean, is that like is that like Dora the Explorer over here, where they teach Spanish to little kids? No, it's not Spanish. It's it's an excuse to have a Spanish stereotype that they think is funny. Uh, no, it's <laughs> not like Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer actually teaches like Spanish. Huh? No, he's like Speedy Gonzalez, but his superpower oh, is. Oh, okay. So instead of having, like, an educational show where they actually teach kids Spanish words, like Dora the Explorer, they just go with the stereotype? No, with this, to teach them maths. Oh, math, okay. And it's el nombre. Oh, oh it's okay, it's a ma number, okay. Get it. <laughs> you got it. Dora the Explorer's that. been going for, like, years now. I just realized that. Dora the Explorer's really old. I've never seen Dora the Explorer. It's all right. For, yeah, it's for a kid show. show. I think I think it was really the first kid show of its kind. I mean, Sesame Street did it sometimes, would teach Spanish words because one of the monsters speaks Spanish or something. Uh, Rosita. Rosita, yeah, she speaks Spanish, and uh, 
sometimes they would do like a little Spanish lesson on Sesame Street, but not always. But Dora the Explorer is just always doing Spanish words, which I think is, you know, great. And then they have a spinoff, which is... I wish they had Dora when I was a kid. Now my then, husband wants me to learn Spanish, and I'm yeah. like, oh, it's work. And then they have Diego, who teaches about Spanish and teaches about animals, so... Is your, um... Heather, is your husband Spanish? Um, he's, Santa. um... He's half Colombian, half Peruvian. Oh, Colombian. Oh, okay. Does he have an accent? No, he was born in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Does he have a New Jersey accent? Oh, no, thank God. Like one of I don't think he stayed in Jersey long. I don't know how long he was there, but... <laughs> is, your, is your husband a real housewife of New Jersey? <laughs> Possibly. I can't divulge that information. <laughs> Can I just say Colombian is my favorite Hispanic accent because of Sofia Vergara? Oh yeah, she's oh, delightfully started, Colombian. <laughs> they, I, they just started putting Modern Family on uh, USA. Yeah, USA, and I was like, I didn't know this show was good. Why didn't anybody tell me? Modern Family is really funny. It is, and yeah, she's she's hilarious. Sofia on that show. Vergara. She's in that new uh, Machete Kills movie, and she has like yeah. a gun bra. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> That's incredible. I thought Lady Gaga was going to be in that. And I was yeah, like, Lady oh. Gaga is going to be in that too, making her acting debut. And I'm really excited. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I heard a review of it last night that said it was a piece of shit. Well, excuse no, you. I can't say I'd be surprised. <laughs> it's a ro- It was based off of, it's supposed to be like kind of crap. Like it's supposed to be almost B-movie. Like if you haven't seen the first Machete, then. House B-movie. Yeah. Like, um. Yeah. Robert no, Rodriguez it, makes those movies now, so... Yeah, no, I'm sure... I mean, no, it didn't say it was a piece of shit. It said it was kind of nuts and bolts, and that a couple of the things that annoyed him about it was the fact that they they were doing everything, like, that we kind of should know better than to do now, like the kind of gratuitous sexism, but they were getting away with it because it was ironic. Well, I mean, it yeah. is. I don't know. Rodriguez I, I haven't seen it, but... You know. <laughs> A lot of people use that whole, no, it's ironic, as in, like, no, you're you're just sexist and you're trying to get away with it. Shut the hell up. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, the thing is, like, that's kind of the way I see it, but I would have to see the movie. I mean, it sounds like fun. I really want to see um The Cool. I haven't heard of that. I haven't either. It's It's got, like, Abigail Breslin from um, Little Miss Sunshine oh. and um, uh, Halle Berry, and it's about, it's a really, like, it kind of taps into something that I'm really, really scared of. It's about a teenage girl getting kidnapped. Uh-huh. And that is something, like, that's always, always been, oh, like, Oh, yeah, my... yeah, yeah, I did heard of that. I did, yeah. I heard it wasn't, it flopped over here, so I don't know if it's that good, but... Well, I think it got good reviews, but it could, it could be shitty, who knows. Um, but it's, it's like, a, she's on the other end of a line, she's a 911, um... Oh, called... you know what, I have heard of that movie, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So she's on the other end of the line to Abigail Breslin and trying to talk her out of the situation. And it, yeah, it looks kind of cool. Has anyone seen Gravity yet? No. Uh, I, apparently, I, that's the best movie ever. I haven't heard anything about it until all these reviews started coming out. It completely, the whole build up passed me by. Yeah. Apparently, so, from what I've read, like George Clooney, trailer. from what I've heard, George Clooney isn't even in the movie that much, but. You know, Sandra Bullock's a good actor on good actress on her own, so I'm not gonna yeah, complain. <laughs> I liked her in um I liked her a lot in Miss Congeniality. I love her ability to be in like really, really good movies and be really good in them, but then also be in like really shitty movies and be really shitty in them. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think that's so, probably like true. in the same year, I think it was like a few years ago when she did the blind side. She won an Oscar, and in that same year, she won a Razzie for, I think it was that All About Steve movie or something. It looks like just one of the worst movies ever made. It looks so bad. The the ability of her to win an Oscar and a Razzie in the same year is blows my mind. I wonder if she's the only person that's ever done that. I don't know. I don't know. Who's- a remarkable achievement. I mean, the biggest kind of, like, upset for me in terms of the Razzies was... Because I remember I saw The Exorcist 2 for the first time after Linkara gave it, like, a stellar review. Like, really... Not The Exorcist 2, sorry. The Exorcist 3 um, really, really talked it up and said it was his favourite horror movie. And I checked it out, and it was brilliant. And it's a real, like, little love... Like, little known... The Exorcist like, 3? Like, yeah, The Exorcist 3 apparently is brilliant. Uh. Not a 
Buffy. I've seen it. It is brilliant. But it's really, really loved in a kind of cult following sort of way. Hmm. But the guy in that won a Razzie and it really, really bummed me out when I found out. I was really angry. I was legitimately upset for him. <laughs> but no, I seriously recommend you check it out. It's a really well acted, well written, scary, subtle movie. My, I, uh, I went to the. Who I could watch read the huh? Yellow Pants. Brad Dorif. Ah. Uh. From like a Lord of the Rings, he played like. Oh, Brad, I love like, Brad Dorif so much. Like, yes. Beautiful, beautiful man. Um, I went to a our our annual. They open up a Halloween store every year during Halloween. Uh, in our in our town, and uh, you don't say. I went so, not during not during Thanksgiving. No, no. <laughs> but it, it. I wish it was a year round store. Honestly, it's a fucking awesome store. But uh, I went there and near like the dressing room area, they had like some animatronics, and they had like a four-ish foot tall animatronic of uh, Reagan from The Exorcist. And, like, her, when you pass by her, her eyes would flash and her head would spin around and she would say something and her eyes would keep flashing and the Exorcist music plays. And I'm like, I need that on my porch year-round. Like, I would just keep <laughs> it there. <laughs> I don't understand why the mailman stopped coming. Yeah, really? <laughs> and it, like, has her, like, gown on and it's covered in, like, you know, little stains of vomit. And it's, like, really awesome. That, it's like 170 bucks, but it's awesome. That's really, actually not that bad. Yeah. In a really, really good comic book store. Yeah, we actually just got a comic book store in our town. In our What's it called? in the mall. It's called I'm gonna plug you guys, Golden Owls Gaming, but they also do card games. They have card game tournaments, but they also do D D tournaments and Pathfinder and stuff. But they also do uh like toys and video games and they do video game trades and they're awesome and they're really nice <laughs> the best one like there was a really brilliant one in my hometown called wtf <laughs> really fucking cool but the the big famous one in the uk is in london and that's um called forbidden planet that's I fucking think I've amazing heard of that, yeah yeah forbidden planet is just like my mecca i wanted to go back to horror stuff for a second, because my mom just uh, watched Paranormal Activity for the first time yesterday. Oh, go for it. Apparently, uh, FX is showing the Paranormal Activity movies, which they're showing two, I think, like, next week, which I haven't seen all of two yet, so, but apparently it's the best one. Uh. (laughs) But she liked it a lot. She's like, every time something, like, really creepy would happen, she's like, (laughs) oh! Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, good job trying to sleep tonight. You already can't sleep at night, so good luck trying again. <laughs> the thing is, it's not one of my favorite horror films, but I really, really, really like it, and it she did asked, scare me. She, she asked me, she's like, you know, the girl keeps getting, you know, fucked around with. Why does she always sleep on the same side of the bed? Why can't she switch sides not closer to the door? <laughs> it's a fair point. I mean, I guess she thinks it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. Yeah. A point. <laughs> but it, it it ended with that. You guys have seen Paranormal Activity, right? I haven't. Oh, I have. I wanna, yeah. But <laughs> just the ending, she's like, oh, oh that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it really scared her. She's like, man, that's creepy. <laughs> it's funny, though. Like, as a horror fan, like, as much as I did like the, and enjoy the first Paranormal Activity, I am. I do think it's a shame, like, we're not having much variation in horror movies recently, like, they all seem to be following the same, you know, they're all slightly supernatural, they all have a lot of dark, um, jump scares, you know, they're often... I mean, I mean, I like, I like Paranormal Activity 3, but they got into, like, you know, devil worship and Satan and demons, and I'm like, no, (laughs) I don't think so. I thought it was kind of cool, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool, but, like... I, it got into, like, you know, devil worship, and I'm just like, you don't need that. <laughs> just have ghosts. You don't need it to be like, you know, this came from Satan. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose the thing is, is they needed some way to expand the story. Yeah, if they were gonna... I don't know. I don't know if it did, though. That's the thing. I'm... No, I, I guess not. I mean, for me, what I really object to now is just how... Because, I mean, I think the Paranormal Activity movies, like, I know you were saying people people think the second one is the best, but for me, they're getting steadily less interesting. And 
it just seems to be because there are so many movies of that vein coming out and I am a horror fan and I just horror used to be so like if you watch a horror documentary like the kind of the trends and the patterns within the horror industry over the years are fascinating and so kind of reflective of what's going on in society and all these other kinds of things and like our own fears as a nation or as a universe and like horror just doesn't seem to be that profound anymore and I think that's kind of sad. Did anybody see Paranormal Activity 4? No. Like, I haven't no seen any of that. the Paranormal Activity movies, so. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't see it. I, I kind of wanted to see them all just for... Yeah. Apparently it's it's not that good, but uh, you know what I like about the Paranormal Activity movies is they, they do have, like, an overlying plot. They all have to do with that Katie girl and, you know, what happened, you know, and it all kind of explains it in a third movie. And I kind of like how she is a part of all of this. Yeah. I, I like that there's kind of, like, an overlaying plot line instead of it just being, you know, one, like, ghost thing after another, that they're completely unrelated. Yeah, and, like, even when she's not seen, her presence is still... I, I like I, how they make sure you know that, yes, these are all related. Yeah, I, I like that. Funny. It's like with Saw, you know? I think Saw is very creative. I think they take a great deal of time and care in what they do. I just don't think... I don't think the ideas and the execution of those ideas, no pun intended are uh, as original mm-hmm. and as inventive and as dark and, like, deep as horror, uh, the horror of yesteryear. I know that's a really, like, everyone says, oh, things were better, you know, way back when, but I definitely think horror, for horror, that is the case. I think we are going through a bit of a slump. Uh, Guillermo del Toro did uh, a movie called Mama, and that was supposedly really good, good horror film. I wanted to see that, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. I The thing that I'm really, really excited about is, for those of you that don't know, um, a film has just just been released um, on kind of really di- limited distribution. Oh, yes. We talked about this. It's so good. Yeah. Escape, Escape from Tomorrow. I read, I read about this in my Entertainment Weekly. They filmed yeah. this movie... They did this guerrilla filmmaking in Disneyland. These people went into Disneyland. They made this movie without Disney's permission. It's incredible. It's so great. I mean, I the Disney company, like, I love Disney, but the Disney company scares me. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have been shitting my pants about the prospect of being caught. But, I mean, honestly, like, that's my two favorite things right there. Me and horror. Yeah, they do. They already make a lot of, like, Disney, um... You know, like, uh, like the Reddit threads and the creepy pasta threads that the internet puts out, like, s- scary stories that the internet will write. And I've seen a lot of good ones about Disney on a uh, creepy pasta and the Reddit no sleep thread and just really good ones about Disney. And I'll have to send them to you because they are really good. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, link dump. And there's so many that are written about Disney. But uh, I like that one of I like that it seems like a creepy pasta has finally like leaped on into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just like how one how audacious they're being with the marketing. I mean, the poster is Mickey Mouse's fist with blood dripping from it, um, with the tagline "Bad things happen any- everywhere" yeah. in yeah. the kind of famous Disney. Um, I don't know what you would call it, the Disney. Font? Yeah, the Disney font, the famous Disney font. But um, also, you know, like, it was filmed in black and white, and a lot of people were like, oh, that's them trying to be avant-garde or whatever, and it's really not. The camera equipment they used, because they were filming it on the, you know, on the down low, couldn't control the lighting. So, you know, black and white just made the most sense. It was yeah. simple. It probably would have looked like crap if they tried to film it in color. Or or if they did, like, a, I, I think the only way they could have done it in color, and it'd be, like, not, you know annoying or you know really distracting would have been if they did it like a found footage kind of thing yeah maybe i mean no i think you're right i think that would have been the only way that would have worked i mean i think the thing is is like it's a weird film anyway and it's just a lucky happenstance that the black and white just enhances the weirdness you know it really works i mean the film looks great it looks really yeah looks really terrifying um 
you know, gr and like the great soundtrack, you know, great acting, great kind of creepy shots. I mean, it just sounds like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm so excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm glad guerrilla filmmaking is coming back in 2013. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And the, the fact that it's something that is obviously, you know, there's going to be some media interest. So Disney, it's be... Disney hasn't released a statement yet, have they? The, I think not a statement as such. I think they just said they were aware it exists. Yeah. They're, they're just kind of ignoring it. Yeah, means... that, that's probably the best thing to do. I think if they made a statement, it would just attract more attention to it. Yeah, exactly. I think they're, they're smart people. They know what they're maybe, doing. Maybe, I think they probably know that people aren't going to take it seriously, so it's not I mean, like I it's going to affect their tourism or their exactly. income and again, or anything. They understand that, and it's going to be a very specific audience that sees it. I mean, it's been compared to, like, David Lynch and things like that yeah. as well. That's why I'm it looks like it. David Lynch. It looks like David Lynch took his camera into Disneyland and was just like, let's just do something. Yeah. <laughs> He does, and it makes you see in the trailer how creepy certain things about Disneyland are, like the kind of immovable animatronic faces and, you know, the big wide smiles and the screening of people like roller coasters and all that, if you look at it in the right way, is unnerving. Weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks really fucking cool. I can't wait. Um, I love theme parks, so... I love you, theme park lore. I love looking that stuff up and being like, you know, people have died at Disneyland. <laughs> and, uh, something else, isn't it? It is something else. I um, I really wanted to talk on a slightly more downbeat note um, about Glee. Uh, that was sad. It was really <laughs> depressing. I didn't cry, but that was depressing. I, I didn't cry until the end. And then I bought, what like, I told you, I said, watching Matthew Morrison, who has the sweetest, cutest baby puppy face, sob like that is like watching a baby get kicked over and over repeatedly. Kind of like anytime I time watch Lord of the Rings and Frodo starts crying, I'm like, nope, can't, I can't deal yeah, with this. Yeah, exactly. Not even the character of Mr. Shu, because I think he's kind of a piece of shit, but... <laughs> What is really interesting about that for me, and I think Glee has really, like, I think it's really out of state its welcome. I think that is just, you know, generally conceived to be the truth. What I loved about that, though, was that the entire episode, it's just Mr. Shoe being Mr. Shoe. It's all the kind of bullshit, charm offensive, razzle dazzle, coming out with platitudes, not getting the impression that he's really feeling anything. Uh, you know, it's, it's all just. It's it's all a front, it's all a facade, it's all him behaving where he thinks he should behave. And, like, then at the end, everything you know about that character, and this is a major spoiler, by the way, just kind of comes crashing down on him. Like, you know he is more insecure and fucked up than any of the kids on that show. And the fact that he steals Finn's jacket and blames it on a teenager just makes complete sense for that character. And then... To have him really let it go and be completely real for the first time yeah. in the history of the show was so moving to me that I just lost it. Yeah, that, I I was like, oh my god, he's crying really hard. <laughs> I know I have this big like graduate thesis, and you were just like, eh. yeah. <laughs> The whole thing was just like, man. Well, now I'm gonna be depressed for the rest of the night. Oh well. <laughs> whole thing was great though i don't think where was diana agron where was quinn fabre i think she had filming commitments was she still filming that robert de niro movie or something i don't know whether it's it might be robert de niro i don't really know but i know she did i know i know heather morris wasn't in it because i know she just had a baby so when they filmed that she would have been like super pregnant thank you Brittany. yeah oh. um but yeah that was that was kind of that was kind i liked uh Leah Michelle did uh, Adele's Make You Feel My Love. That was really, really good. It was beautiful, wasn't that it? That was really I mean, good. I, I liked Puckerman coming back. I mean, Puckerman, I'm always happy to Mark see Mark Stelling is such a cutie. He's, like, the cutest guy on that show. Gorgeous. But sometimes I have no idea. Like, he needs a new stylist because sometimes I can't even deal with his hair. His hair was good in the special. Oh, not really. He had, like, this really ugly comb over, and I'm like, ew. <laughs> It again i was really pleased um i i also i love coach beast coach beast is my hero oh, yeah. 
my mom loves Dot Marie Jones in general. You know, and I told her, I'm like, you know, she just got married to her girlfriend. She's all, she's my hero, Dot Marie Jones. I and Coach Beast. I think they're both awesome. I think Coach Beast is the most interesting three dimensional character on Glee. I fucking love her. She's a badass. And uh, what else did I like? I just liked that it was so like ungratuitous. You know, they like. I, I like how they didn't say how the character died. Yeah, like, and Kurt was the kind of pillar of strength in the episode. Like, he was like. He he was so dignified and so adult and like yeah I think the point he made is totally valid you know it's not really about that it should be about a celebration of his life and it's like it would be very easy to make it a teachable moment you know what you know what blew my mind that he was they said that he was nineteen in the show but I'm like Cory Monty was like thirty <laughs> yeah I know he didn't look it did he he had like this baby face though so like. He could he could pull it off, I think, pretty well. He got away with it, but some people don't. American shows have a terrible habit of casting people that look way too old. Yeah, like, they... I, I'm glad, like, there's a Nickelodeon show that I really liked called Drake and Josh, and it was uh, Drake Bell and Josh Peck, and by the time they ended it, they were, like, mid-20s going into their, almost going into their 30s, like, and they were still playing teenagers, so I'm like, please end it soon, because you guys are looking way too old to be <laughs> still be in high school. <laughs> I love that you liked Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh is the best show ever. <laughs> I can't even be cynical about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was very moved by the fact that it wasn't a sob fest. Yeah, they, they're kind of just like, yeah... <laughs> Like, I mean, it was it was, it was was sad, but it was an honest look at the way people grieve, and that isn't always sobbing, you know? People were still themselves. There were still, you know, lines that were really funny. It just felt very authentic, and all the performances were brilliant. I like the moment that uh, Santana had with Jane Lynch. Oh, that, again, both wonderful performances. Yeah, and then Jane Lynch at the end was like, you know, yeah, I was a jerk to him, and I feel really bad about that. Yeah, it was it was very very moving. Again, I you know Jane Lynch, I just I love. So yeah, it was it was really I thought it was respectful, and I'm I'm glad they didn't make it about drugs like they were originally going to. Yeah, the teachable moment has already happened. You know they they can't make any more of a teachable moment out of it, and you know yeah, it should be a celebration. I mean, they they had the episode, they had an anti-addiction PSA at the end with the actors, and that was really all they needed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was very respectful. I don't think anyone could object to it. I think they'd have a very hard time objecting to it. Um, but then it, it comes back on... I felt really bad for being happy so soon after that episode because... Uh, oh, it comes back with Lambert. It comes back on November 2nd and Adam's gonna be on there. <laughs> I love Adam, your own first name terms. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> He's gonna sing. I I just I voice gets any higher. Only dogs will be able to hear you. I realized <laughs> just the other day that Adam Lambert singing Lady Gaga on Glee is like the most homosexual thing I've ever heard in my life. That is Holy Trinity. That is the Homo trilogy. It really is. It is like the peak of homosexuality. I he, I he will I, sing I, Lady. He is gonna sing Lady Gaga. By the way. I know I know nothing about Adam Lambert, but I'm just looking forward to Glee being back. I mean, I know Glee isn't perfect, but I have so much love for that show. Well, I'm going to have to keep watching it because he's apparently going to be a recurring character, so I'm not going to know which episodes he's going to be in, so I'm just going to have to keep fucking watching. He's going to be a foil for Kurt. Yeah. Which should be interesting. I'm I'm excited. His His character name is supposed to be... It's supposed to be Starchild, which is the nickname that w- w- uh, Paul Stanley had when he was in Kiss. So I'm like, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck relevance does Kiss have on all of this? Yeah, that seems like a peculiar direction. It seems extremely play. obscure. He <laughs> does. I've been on tend- tenderhooks. I can't wait any longer. Can I please play you the theme tune to Big Cook, Little Cook? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Cook for everyone! 
American. That sounds very. That sounded very cheerful enough to be an American theme song. Well, I think <laughs> really, really little children tend to be more American, and then gradually as they get. As children get more and more cynical, so then does their entertainment. Yeah. What was that, um... We're getting on the back topic of children's shows, but there was that one guy that you guys had who was almost like Mr. Rogers, but he touched little kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's he chipper. He was like Mr. Rogers, but he touched kids. No, you uh, guys had him. He was, like, really famous, but he got arrested because he touched a bunch of kids. He wasn't, mis- <sighs> he wasn't anything like Mr. Rogers. I know he wasn't like Mr. Rogers, but I was trying to find a comparison. <laughs> Mr. Rogers didn't touch children, but... the, what, Mr. the- Mr. Rogers was never as creepy as this guy. I know who you're talking about now, Jimmy Savile. Yes. Jimmy Savile was... He presented a show called Jim Will Fix It, which was kids coming on the show... And he'd be able to grant them, like, a wish. Except, like, if they said, like, I wanted to go into space, then they'd be like, well, I can't do that, but do you want to, like, meet a Dalek from Doctor Who? Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> dance around with Banana Rama or something like that. Like, they, so they they couldn't really, you know, the budget was not... Yeah. You want to meet a like, Dalek from Doctor Who instead? <laughs> like, a fucking five-year-old putting up a Doctor Who is... <laughs> Yeah, not quite the same. But no, he, he, after he died, it was discovered that he had been a paedophile since the 1960s. And like, the, what was really weird about it was that this was after, you know, he'd been an award, he'd been awarded an OBE, which is like a, um, so he was Sir Jimmy Savile. Um, you know, he was a national treasure. And slowly, you know, due to this being uncovered, it's been discovered that basically any light entertainer from the 1970s that may have won an OBE was a pedophile. I mean, they are all being arrested. Wow. It's like they're, it's like they're being rounded so, up. So, like, did he get his title stripped away from him even though he was dead? Or, like, does he still have it? I presume so. I don't know whether that's possible. But, I mean, he certainly should have. I mean, what was really scary about it was that it was a massive cover-up by the BBC. Oh, my God. I know. So, like, the, the BBC knew about it, but they were just like. I think probably some people did. Uh huh. And like they refused to air an episode of Newsnight Review that no, not Newsnight Review, sorry, Panorama that had been like into the whole thing. They wouldn't air it. So I mean, it's a big controversy. Huh. Whereas Mr. Rogers, I don't believe. Um, Mr. Rogers was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> you shut your face. Angel, he sounds like an absolute yeah, lovely... He didn't touch kids, but... It's still alive. No. Aww. He's been dead since, like, the 90s, I want to say, or early 2000s. He's been dead for a while. He seems like a lovely man. I mean, wasn't his mantra just, like, you're all... Everybody is special, and you should love everybody, and that was basically it. That's fucking gorgeous. Yeah, it really is. God bless you, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I don't believe in God, but God bless you. <laughs> um, I I don't really have anything else to um contribute today. I don't know whether you guys do. Uh, I don't have anyone to talk about anime with, so. Oh, great. Or Pokemon, but I was gonna you... I was gonna explain Pokemon. You don't know anything about Pokemon, do you? Um, no, I I did. I I played with the cards when I was younger. Oh. I had a shitty chancy. Because Pokemon X and Y came out today, and I'm just, like, really sad because I don't have a 3DS or money, so... I know the <laughs> theme tune. Do you want to hear me sing the Pokemon theme tune? You can. Do you know it? I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Da, da, da. To, train the <laughs> to train them is my cause. Don't da, interrupt da, da, da. me. <laughs> I will travel across the land. Searching far and wide. Da, da, da. <laughs> there are beats in the middle. You have to wait. <laughs> Don't interrupt me, Gray. This is gonna be my violent. time. Teach Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Pokemon, gotta catch them. It's you and me. I know it's my destiny. Pokemon, Ooh. oh, my best friend. <laughs> In a world we must defend. Pokemon, gotta catch him. It's so true. 
our courage will follow through. You teach me and I'll teach you. Pokemon! Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that was me giving myself a round of applause. Yeah. Um, you know that, that's about it, but you're like, didn't a new Pokemon game come out today? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like that? Do I talk like that? A little bit. Oh, God. Oh, You heavens. say Pokemon, Pokemon like Pokemon. You, but you say it Pokemon. Pokey. Pokemon. <laughs> well, in, po- in, Japanese, in Japanese, it's Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. Oh, that's racist. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Man. What is wrong with me today? I'm the accidental racist? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, um, but yeah, Pokemon X and Y came out today. I'm just really sad. But I'm still hyped for the game. And I'm probably going to go over to my neighbor's house, whose uh, girl that I'm friends with has the game. So I'm probably going to go over there sometime today. Oh, but nice. before that... I'm going to... Okay, so PetSmart has all their Halloween costumes 50% off, so I'm going to go get a costume for my dog. Oh, your poor dog. Oh, Christ. No, because... Okay, no, I'm going up to Savannah, which I'm probably going to see Rose up there um, in a couple weeks, but I'm going to go up there with my neighbor and her kids and one of their more well-behaved dogs, and I'm going to take my dog, and we're going to go to... um, uh, It's a little thing... In uh, downtown Savannah, where a bunch of businesses participate in this, and you dress up your dog, and you start at a certain point, and you go around, and you trick or treat for your dog. Aww. And it's gonna be awesome. But why do you want to dress your dog up? Because I want to dress him up like a little shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably. I'm I love that there wasn't really an explanation other than I wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly certain if I put anything on my cat, she will kill me in my sleep. I'm most likely going to get one of two things. I'm going to get a shark fin, which it, I put it on him before when I went over there once, and he seemed to be okay with it because it kind of feels like his walking harness. Oh, that's right. It's like, yeah, as long as it's and, nothing. And I want to like do the shark thing and then maybe make it into some Sharknado-themed costume. Oh, yes. You <laughs> or two... <laughs> I, and I saw this on their online store, but I don't know if they would actually have it there, but it's a Captain America costume. <laughs> I really want to do a oh. Captain America, but I think he'd be more comfortable in the, the shark thing, so. Yeah, I think he probably would be more comfortable in the shark thing, and you could be the tornado. Yeah, I probably, yeah, I could be the tornado. <laughs> I didn't think of me being the tornado. I was thinking, like, flipping something onto him that looked like a tornado, but I didn't think about me being a tornado. No, see, that's because you don't think outside the box. Thank you. (laughs) I'm going to do that. Probably going to ask my neighbor for help. She's making her costume for her dog. It's going to be, like, um, she's going to put aviator glasses on him and a little, like, jacket, and they have a wagon, and she's going to make it look like like a hot air balloon. Oh, cool. So he's going to be like a little hot air balloon pilot. Oh, I might just go as girl with axe in head again. Uh, I found a, I found a good costume where uh, it's a Pokemon related costume where you just take a piece of paper and you write ditto on it and put it on yourself. Because ditto, <laughs> nobody got that joke. Ditto is a Pokemon that's a pink blob that can just change in any other Pokemon. So... <laughs> If you just call yourself Ditto, you'd be like, I'm a Ditto. And if nobody gets it, then that's their loss for not knowing enough about Pokemon. Then you need to go find better friends. Yeah, (laughs) you really do. In America for Halloween, though, don't, like, you dress up as, like... Because over here, you're just supposed to dress up as scary things. Whereas in America... You can do anything you want. Yeah, that's really... That's totally different to over here. Over here, people just dress up as scary stuff. At, like, at the Halloween store, they have a they have a costume that I've always seen there year-round, and you can dress up as the Shocker, which is, like, that hand... That yeah. thing you do with your hand when, during sex. Whoa, like whoa, whoa, hand, whoa. Back. Like a costume as a hand, but one of the fingers is down, so you're the Shocker. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna do that one year. We, I, we keep it classy in the States. Yeah. <laughs> I can't envision this. Last year, Gavin Gavin Free from Rooster Teeth dressed up as a penis. That's nice. Yeah, that's a penis costume. 
I am going to dress up as a boob. You should. <laughs> if I'm going to have those somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably easily done. My face could be the nipple. <laughs> <laughs> just have like a boob mask and just wear it. <laughs> But I wouldn't be able to see, and I'd have to roll everywhere. Yeah. Well, you could be, like, a boob, like, an actual boob, or, like, a boob, like, an insult. Like, you're a boob. No, an actual boob. Okay. Because people don't use boob, is it? Can you imagine it's, it's, a Isn't it breast fucking Breast Cancer Awareness Month? So that would be good. Oh, perfect. See? <laughs> but can you imagine a British person referring to somebody as a boob? <laughs> it's a Pick term I've heard before. I haven't heard people actually use it, but... It, they used it on Drake and Josh all the time. <laughs> Miranda Cosgrove would call her brothers a boob. Bloody Drake and Josh. <laughs> you know what I really like? Phineas and Ferb. Rose loves Phineas and Ferb. Me and Rose love the same of, and not quite to the same extent as me and Heather, because uh, I haven't found a single thing that I love that Heather doesn't love, or vice versa. Well, you're really into Glee, apparently. Oh, oh, oh. So we have a, that. A point I of tension I, I don't like glee <laughs> uh, well i mean i the thing is like i know glee is a piece of shit oh okay well then i guess we're on the same page <laughs> okay, okay, cool. i completely understand people not liking glee yeah i get it. i, I get never it. actually watched an episode but i heard their attempt at doing rocky horror and it just made me angry yeah i mean yeah. rocky so, I rocky horror you. is my favorite movie and I mean, I love it, but I'm not, like, a purist about it or anything. Like, I'm totally fine with, you know, tribute shows and stuff like that. But, I mean, that well, was it, okay. I mean, it, it was just, horrible. I heard somebody, they were singing uh, Touch a Touch a Touch Me. And they just, like, sucked all the feeling out of it. They just sounded bored. I'm like, I don't remember who, like, I don't super re- horny for this song. Could you put a little feeling into it? I don't remember who sang yeah. it. I can't really... I, I don't remember it being particularly memorable. They they don't have a great track record with musical theatre um Songs. like tributes. The best the best example was um the West Side Story episode. That yeah, was they really did West Side Story, didn't they? They did West Side Story really, really well. That was great. Anytime they sing rent songs, it's usually pretty good. Uh, well they've only done that once, haven't they, for the Cory They did it a couple time other times, I think. I really, really like Seasons of Love. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. I think that was perfectly utilized. Oh, yeah, they did do it a couple of other times. Yeah, I remember they did um, Take Me or Leave Me. Yeah. I think at any time they've done, they've, they've done Wicked a couple times as well, and it's usually very good. Defiant Gravity is like, that's the, probably the best cover of Defiant Gravity is Leah Michelle and uh, Chris Colford's. Uh, I've seen Wicked. I read Wicked. the book, but I haven't seen the. I'd musical. love to read. I'd love to read the book because it's a great. The book idea. is really good. The book is supposed to be like really like sexual. Yeah, <laughs> it's very adult. Yeah, what is that? I've had friends who have read it. They really like it. It's yeah, good. so it's obviously completely different to the musical because the musical is none of those things. The musical sucks. It's a, it's a little different. Does it? This is disappointing. I know friends who love the musical though, so they love I the book it, and the musical. It either is playing or it's going to be playing at a local, well, relatively local theater. It's a well, city, I so. I really like it. I mean, I think the thing is, is it's entertaining. It's just one of those things that you're being entertained, but you're aware that it's not good and it's annoying you. You know, you're being kept engaged because it's a big multi-million dollar musical, but you're aware the entire time that it has serious, serious problems. It kind of describes how I feel watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> Well, really? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I'm it's not- because I've read the books first, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you could have cut this random titty shot and put some plot in there. Come on, give me a fucking break. <laughs> and it works. It, it angers me deeply, but I still, I, I still watch it. Like it, it's. I'm one of those people watchable. that completely does not really mind the nudity in Game of Thrones. It's I really do I'm, not mind. <laughs> it's not that I mind it. It's just like they they put in these sex scenes and these full frontal shots of women naked. First of all, they do that every I think I can't think of a single episode that hasn't had at least boobs in it. Usually it's a full frontal put them in season three. They there's still like I can't think of a single episode that doesn't have at least a boob shot in it. And then there's like three instances over three series of showing a penis. 
And it's, it's and, a boob. And they're not even it's like... Boob. There's nothing wrong with a boob. It's not that there's something wrong. It's the fact that it's obviously like, here's some titties. You can't show some naked guys for the straight women in the audience. It's like the disparity between, oh, boobs are okay because women are here to be pretty, but we don't want to, sh- nobody wants to see a yeah, penis. It's like, I totally agree with Heather. I it's can... the, it's the obvious misogyny of it that really irritates the crap like, out of me. All like the main women in the show are very, very strong characters. Well, yeah, but that's, that's George R. R. Martin's doing, not HBO's. <laughs> I mean, but like, like Sansa, even like, Sansa who started out as kind of like, uh, you don't really like her that much because he's really weak. But even now, she's like, well, that's because Sansa's off 14. <laughs> I think any complaint about Sansa, she starts out, even in the book as well, very shallow and yeah, very, very like, you know, I want to be a pretty princess. It's like, well, she's 14 and she doesn't know any better. But now or 13, but now I think, in the first book. She's having to deal with this Joffrey's bullshit and she knows it, but she can't leave. And, you know, you have even, yeah. even uh, you know, Shay. I like her as a character. They have Catelyn. They have Daenerys. Daenerys is like the epitome of Daenerys. a strong female character. Daenerys and Arya, I think, are my favorite Daenerys ladies. Daenerys and Arya and, uh, uh, what's her name? Jon Snow's girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Egret. Egret, yeah. Like, her. She's awesome. And, you know, all these well, really yeah. strong female characters. He has written some, like, all of his characters are brilliantly written. Like, there's no full, oh, this guy. There are obviously people that are, like, there seem to have absolutely no redeeming qualities whatsoever, like Even Joffrey. Cersei. Per- I like Cersei a lot. She's it, a yeah, it's, it's just bitch, but I like her. <laughs> they're so three-dimensional. Like, uh. there's no, oh, this is obviously the bad guy. There is no redeeming quality. There is no explanation for why he's bad or, you know, whatever. It's like, even Cersei, she's pretty fucking awful, but... You can see that she, she cares so quality. much about her children that it's actually somewhat of a redeeming quality. That is, but as she far as take, the uh, she doesn't take anybody's bullshit either. Yeah, as far as the nudity of the series and the sex scenes, it's just it aggravates me because there is sex and nudity in the books, but they put they seem to focus more on oh we got to slip in a sex scene the, because it's the way, the way, way. you could have gotten more plot from the actual books considering. It's not nearly as close to the books as I thought it was going to be, and it feels very rushed because they're trying to put so much, condense so much, um, so many pages into typically one series except for the last one. It's like, you know, you could have gotten something more important if you cut out this shot of some prostitute's boobs. The way, I, that, the way I see that, it, I that, that, the way I see it is that I don't see, I, I think a lot of people see George R. R. Martin as, like, a misogynist or a sexist, and I'm like, he's not writing it because he's a sexist. He is writing it because it's the environment so and the universe that he writes is misogynistic and sexist. Yes, but you could argue that he could have written it differently, but the, there I, are points I, where it's like... I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, sorry. I interrupted you. What were you saying? Uh, in the books, he uses rape a lot and it's because it's based off medieval times and that happened a lot yes i am aware of that but the point is it's a fantasy novel to this is to say i love the books i am obsessed with the books right now and i'm not saying that george R. R. martin is a misogynist or you know anything like that it's the fact that he's writing a fantasy novel he could write them any way he wants to but, but, he, but he's them basing it off business. something. Yes. He's basing it off... It, everything in Game of Thrones points to this is based off medieval times. They have jousting. They have fairs. They have big castles. It's European medieval times that it's based off of. And that happened a lot. Of course it did. Yeah. It still happens a lot. But the point mainly being, the characters that he writes, particularly the women are very, they're actual people, which is why I would say he doesn't fall into the, just because there's rape a lot in the books, it's not that he's a misogynist, because he also writes women as people as opposed to pretty things or something there to use rape as, oh, see what happens to women type thing? There's not, there's not a whole lot of rape that I've seen in the show. It, 
it, there is a lot. There's one the ter- There's one time where Sansa <laughs> almost got raped, and you knew it wasn't going to happen. That actually but... wasn't in the books. It wasn't. At least it wasn't spelled out in that she was yeah. still lost, but they didn't say that she almost got raped. There was another character that's not in the series that was supposed to have been raped by half a hundred people. Yeah, and then she gets pregnant and is repeatedly she's traumatized by the event Mm -hmm. and it's a side character and you know there's even a point in which uh shay's like i don't know why she's complaining so much they only fucked her and i'm like well that's that's dark (laughs) but well it's only it's the only thing that shay knows exactly it's you can see you could argue that based on how often it's used in the books that it's kind of sexist but you could also argue that that's the the world that he wrote yeah. is very medieval. It's very dark and horrible things happen to everybody. Yeah. So it's not like he's just throwing it in there. There's there's plot backing up why this is the way it is. This is why it happens. So that's and, why I don't. And it's I real think evil. awful things happen to the men and the the male and female characters. You know, Tyrion yeah. and Jamie and you know Ned and <laughs> nobody is exempt from horrible things. Happening. Rob and Jon Snow. <laughs> But yeah, well, I forgot just, to mention Brienne of Tarth, who's my favorite character, and she's I love the biggest character on the show. So he he does write women very very well, and characters in general very very well, which is why I really love the books. Brienne of Tarth is the greatest warrior. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've got to watch Thrones. I'm missing out so much. It's very English. You'd re- you'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny. It's it's. Because it's HBO, I think of it as inherently American. But of course, like it's set in medieval times, that's pretty British. I mean, they have Stephen Merchant on HBO right now, so. Oh yeah, they do. Have you been watching Hello, Ladies? I haven't been. No, it's I could. <laughs> I kind of thought the trailer didn't look that funny. It's really. I like it. It's really. It's it's cringe comedy where something really bad will happen to him and he just continues to make it worse and you're just like, oh no. <laughs> so like accustomed to that now from Stephen Merchant and Ricky Gervais. Yeah, like it's that kind of comedy, but it's done really well, I think. Oh well I'll have to check it out. I mean I, I loved his stand up show. Yeah. I was so that was called Hello Ladies as well. Yeah. Um that was awesome. And I mean I liked I liked the idea of there being a show on American TV starring a man that looks like Stephen Merchant. Yeah, really. <laughs> I think that's fucking cool. And he, uh, he actually does say the line, hello, ladies, a lot. <laughs> he's just <laughs> walking up to a bar, the, some girls dancing. He's like, hello, ladies. <laughs> like, You're such a nerd. <laughs> thinking that he's some kind of stud, like the disparity between the way he sees himself and the way the world sees him is yeah. It's all he plays funny. like kind of a jerk though, like yeah, like a sleaze, yeah. like a real sleaze. He's really character. like an asshole sometimes. Because yeah, he, he originally not, like, didn't want the character to be like that, but the directors told him he's like, can you make him like meaner? <laughs> I'm totally cool with that as long as it's funny. I I'm like, and as long as you do also care about him. Yeah, like. The thing, if he was an asshole that I didn't care about, that would annoy like, me. Like, he but... has scenes where, like, in the first episode, he's, like, you know, he failed to get a date and didn't want to go out. So he's just, like, sitting at his kitchen table, you know, drinking Fanta and eating chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> and... He sounds like me. I seriously think, like, th- there is a real, like, love out there in, like, the fandom universe for Stephen Merchant. Like, it really is. He's really it's... underrated. Particularly after Portal, so many women want to take him home. But, I mean, that video of him on uh, Fallon with him and uh, Fallon and Joseph Gordon-Levitt lip-syncing, having a lip-syncing contest, I mean, that went viral. That has, like, six million views. <laughs> it's funny, like, he loves that song. He actually did um, Boom Shake the Room on um, the Jonathan Ross show. Oh, really? um, <laughs> Yeah, like, that was the first time he did it. Um, and it was completely spontaneous. He hadn't planned it, but it was fucking awesome. So he really does love Will Smith. That wasn't something yeah. he just... He did Fallon. single ladies and he twerked. It was awesome. When did he do single? Was that on the same show? Yeah, he lip synced to single ladies. Did he? I totally missed that. That's fucking hilarious. That was the hilarious. second part of the contest. He's like, I'm going to do a song by... Uh, 
lady named Beyonce Z. And then Fallon's like, I, I don't think she took her husband's last name. And he's like, oh, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get that over in England. <laughs> Oh, fuck me. I need to watch this right yeah, now. I see, he I'm did gonna... single ladies and he ended up twerking as well, so. Oh, <laughs> still my being And heart. Joseph Gordon-Levitt did uh, Nicki Minaj and... Uh, love Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's a big cutie. He's such a cutie. I loved him on Third Rock from the Sun. <laughs> I loved that show. I legit loved that show. Um... On that note, I'm going to have to head off, I'm afraid. Yeah, um, I'm, gonna go, got... I'm probably going to take my dog to Pet Smart, so he probably oh. needs to get out today. Okay, guys, well, that was um, that was our first non-blip um, Yeah, episode. continue to follow us on YouTube, subscribe, like, leave us comments. It's probably easier on YouTube to leave comments now, and YouTube actually has a subscribe feature, so make sure to subscribe. And I'm pretty sure the subscription things are like, really weird right now you have to go to manage subscriptions and then click on like who you subscribe to and click on you make sure you want to see these videos in your feed when they get uploaded it's really weird now you have to go into your settings and do that shit so the upside is guys you no longer have to watch us with commercials yeah i mean sometimes youtube has ads but you know whatever it's usually pretty short I have a feeling they won't have ads for us. YouTube ads are pretty <laughs> short anyway, if we ever do get ads, so, you know, whatever. But, you know, if you're having trouble figuring out the subscriptions and making them show up on your feed, like, someone probably has an article showing you how to do it. Uh, like, comment, we have a Facebook page. Oh, I wanted to let everyone know that I did, uh, I did get rid of the Tumblr page because it was not getting updated, and it was just, uh, so... There is, uh, well, no, there is no more gr- those girls podcast.tumblr.com. That doesn't exist anymore. If we get an- popular enough to where we might need another Tumblr page, I'll make another one. But at this point, we have a Facebook page and a YouTube page, and that's doing pretty well for us right now. So, Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it is only a matter of time. We are very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my new catchphrases. I will now be... Um, Every episode, I will mention someone that may or may not be a friend of the show, and I will be referring to you all as the ladies and gentlemen at home. Yeah. So look forward to that. (laughs) Good. (laughs) You'll be the only one that has a catchphrase. Good job. Yeah. Maybe maybe it'll get turned into a Cards Against Humanity card or something. I don't know. That would be so sweet. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, make it happen. Um. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go. Just make sure to. Keep following us on Facebook for any sort of, you know... If you want our entire archive, it got uploaded to YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's to you, Brad. Blimey. I uploaded was- the entire archive to YouTube, which took about a day and a half. So if you want to watch any of the older episodes, they're there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we did a, we did a super... Na- you guys did a Supernatural podcast a couple days ago, and that went up. If you like Supernatural, go watch it. Uh, it was recorded before the season premiere, so keep that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. So it will be spoiler free for the season premiere. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to do it, every other season. If you guys want another one at the end of the season or whenever, just let Brandon Heather know, and I will try to make that happen. Yeah, keep us posted because we thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't think either of us need an excuse to talk about Supernatural for an hour and a half. Um, if no. you want another special cast then let us know. It may or may not be a show that we watch. Like, I, I can't do one on, like, Breaking Bad or something. I haven't seen Breaking Bad, but, I mean, I could do one prepared on... prepared to go on for two hours about the Game of Thrones books. We can do one <laughs> on Just Game saying. of Thrones when it comes Oh, out. sorry, A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah. I did that so nobody else could. We can, we can do one on Game of Thrones when the season starts to come I, out. I, I, think, I, think that started, um, I think that started today. I think today was a bit of a test drive for the Game of Thrones cast, and I, I have to say... You talked very articulately about it, and I would listen, despite not knowing Game of Thrones. Well, you wouldn't listen because there would be so many spoilers. Oh, uh, yeah, right. You don't need to know who dies and who lives yet. Okay, well, I would watch Game of Thrones solely on the basis of the ten minutes that you spent talking about it. Oh, good. We should yeah, do that. So. <laughs> and I will read the books. Yeah. Um, anyway, guys and gals, I really do have to go, I'm afraid. Thank you guys for... For following us all the way to YouTube. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, you know, keep um, yeah, keep listening because we're gonna keep 
bringing you new fantastic stuff. We're we're back. We're not quitting or anything because Blip, you know, kicked us off. So <laughs> I'm saying that openly now. I hope you never pick us up again. <laughs> you fucking assholes! Shut up! You're gonna get us in trouble. Fucking bastards! You fat, <laughs> fucking fat cats! You're gonna get us in so much trouble. You need to stop right now. Monopoly men sitting up there on your ivory 